Mess with the dominatrix and you'll cry. Alerts. NSFW. Mobile. No native English. I work as a cam girl. Doing video chats with guys for money. Most of the sessions I have are fetish related and I work for many small sites. One day I had a guy wanting to be my slave. Meaning he wanted me to be a dominatrix and to command him to perform painful and degrading acts on himself. Most of these so-called slaves are actually very soft core in what they are willing to do. Initially he paid for a one-hour session and we got along so well he paid for a second hour. At the start of the session I always set up a safe word and we talk about turn-ons, limits and I respect them. It's part of the dome, sub-dynamic to build a trustful relationship. I did the session. He seemed happy and so was I. He was indeed very softcore. A month later the site owner messaged me to say that a client contacted him accusing me of fraud. Threatening to call the police. He said I blackmailed him to make him send money and never delivered the session. I showed the screenshots of the conversation so I was off the hook with the site and they didn't issued a refund. But the guy asked for a chargeback in his credit card company and I had around $400 bucks deducted from my paycheck. It's important to stress that services of sexual nature have very different billing rules. It's against the terms of service of all the mainstream payment processors such as PayPal, Venmo, Google Pay, etc. You have to own a high-risk merchant account with very high fees so we use third-party companies that facilitate it for us. Some of them cover these eventual chargebacks. Others don't. This one didn't. Fast forward six months. I was contacted on Skype by a guy wanting to be my slave for one hour. This is not a rare request so. I didn't connected the dots at first I sent him a link for payment. Luckily this time in a site that cover chargebacks. He paid. When he opened his camera. There he was. I never forgot his face and accent because he was very weird. It was the same guy who accused me of fraud and got his money back. I'd have terminated the call right away. But knowing I was protected by chargeback in this other site. I decided to get my revenge so I pretended I haven't recognize him. Knowing he was softcore but willing to obey. I started to give him tasks that were literally turn offs for him. I didn't set up a safe word this time. I let it escalate quickly to very hardcore stuff and used all. The mind games to push him to his limits. He went 20 minutes straight. He was crying until he gave up and hung up on me. I even called back a few times and he didn't answer. I clearly stated that his remaining minutes were forfeited because he left the session on his own. Will, a week later the owner of the site asked for proof of the session. Because the client contacted them saying the service wasn't delivered and he wanted a refund, I had everything documented. They pay for the time not for the actions. So whatever happened in the session is at our own discretion, he never got the refund and this site has a chargeback protection so he didn't get the money back this time. He is blacklisted now and never heard from him again. I hope he left the BDSM world for good. TLDR. Submissive guy booked online session with a dominatrix made false accusations to get his money back. Six months later he show up again. I pretend I didn't recognize him and made he do things he didn't like until he hung up crying. If he did this for $400 he 100% did this to others and possibly stole much much more time from then. Just that. Yeah fuck that dude. Ha, huh, fuck that guy. Literally. I'm curious why safe words are a thing with online BDSM? I guess I know nothing. How do you make them do what they don't want to do? Especially online.
Why do you need a safe word when they can just cut the call? This is a genuine question. Someone please an R. I'm conflicted. Theft is clearly not okay but sexual shit like this crosses a line. From a fellow Dom. You fucked up here. Doms like you make me afraid to be part of the BDSM community. This is why I can't trust PPL, both the guy and the OP's actions are off-putting to me. I guess it's pro-revenge but it's not that satisfying. This guy was wrong to try and pull a fast one on you guys. That said. This is shameful BDSM behavior and not okay. Nothing. No amount of money is worth pushing someone past their limits with no safe word in place when they may be in deep sub space. Consent is everything. Shame on you. I don't know anything about the BDSM scene. But all the hate you're getting is interesting. If he did it to you he did it to plenty of others and apparently had no qualms surfing through that world ripping people off left and right. Seems to me he had it coming and he was just another example of entitled men thinking they can abuse women. Sometimes the only thing some men hear is getting their ass kicked. I'm confused at all the criticism of op. He could have ended the call at any point. And he did. Also. You don't think the caller recognized op? Guarantee he did. And was likely planning on doing a chargeback again. No matter how the session went. Choices. We all have them. He never got the refund and this site has a chargeback protection so he didn't get the money back. This time. Actually. He most likely did. Credit card companies don't care. They are always on the side of their card holder. Many times they'll even just process a refund for their customer while also not getting the money back from the store. This isn't pro at all. Try our petty revenge. Edit. For those of you saying it's pro, there's no fallout. Sure. He was banned from one side of hundreds. But that's not enough to significantly change someone's life. I don't really get it. What limits on Skype can you push someone to? This isn't an air that I know much about. You call him names or something? I'm struggling to understand what could be said in a Skype session that's so bad to make someone cry. In this type of context anyway. This story put a bad taste in my mouth. I understand that this guy was a creep. But I feel like there are certain expectations and rules you have to follow with this business. This story comes off as sexually abusive. This isn't pro-revenge. This is awful and unsafe behavior on your part. You don't have to play mind games or endanger someone in a vulnerable state to get revenge or justice. You should have just refused to work with him instead of borderline committing sexual assault. WTF. I'm also a sex worker before you try to accuse me of not getting it or whatever. Nothing but an eye roll from me. Block and report to a database that offers protection to swears in future. Congratulations. You abused someone. How wonderful. I am glad you made out okay. And I am not the person who gets to tell you if your morals or ethics are poor. But I would consider this sexual assault. Perhaps not legally. But definitely in spirit. This is enough that even hearing a rumor that you did this would keep me from engaging your services. Honestly. You make my skin crawl and my heart hurt. Consent and empathy are the only concepts I hold sacred. And you are crowing over violating both. If you enjoyed this video, please check out our playlists full of similar content. Epic Heracast is like doom scrolling for your ears. Please like, share, and subscribe.